Okay, today we are trying out the only game where exploding and destroying the solar system over and over again is considered fun, which is Universe Sandbox 2. And somehow, the more destruction we cause, the more entertaining the game becomes. You may have heard from time to time that this and that celestial objects are going to collide with our Earth, but they never do. Disappointment, right? So today, our primary mission is to destroy our beloved home planet Earth by colliding it with all of the celestial bodies there are in our solar system and see how many times can we make life literal hell on Earth. So, right here, we have a tab containing all the properties of Earth which we can customize. So why not go ahead and rename our planet to something that is going to happen a lot with Bruh. it today? Alright, so it's time to make the Earth live up to its expectation and launch the smallest planet in our solar system, which is Mercury. Which should do some damage, but I am not expecting it to be a lot. Alright, attaboy, Mercury! It's time to go and hug Earth, especially Ohio. Mercury seems to be vanishing right into Earth's surface, so of course the impact point is pretty much done for, but the shock waves are spreading around Earth, which can travel around Earth and destroy the planet completely. And as you can see here, we have life likelihood over here, which shows how many percentage of people might still be alive after the collision. And it seems to be dropping super fast. Wait, how is it going back up? If there is something that people of Earth know how to do is procreate super fast, even in circumstances like these. And I am 100% sure that it's those people from Arizona because no one other than them can reproduce in heat like this. We were able to get the Earth's life likelihood down to 8.57% with such a small planet like Mercury. Let's see what would happen if we collide it with the second planet on the list, which is Mars. All right, off you go, Mars. You can finally claim the water that the people from Earth have been trying to find on you so desperately. This time, since the colliding body is bigger than the last one, we can already see the core temperature rising to higher numbers as compared to when it collided with Mercury. I never thought that ending mankind along with our beautiful planet Earth would create a work of art like this. But let's see how much life likelihood can drop to before we move on to the next destruction. It almost touched the 8% mark, which is a good change for a game where destruction is our main goal. So let's drop it furthermore by colliding it with the third planet on our list, which is Venus. Now, since Venus is a rather large body of its own, it of course has its own gravitational pull, which makes it try to pull away from Earth at first, but fails to do so, and comes straight crashing into the Earth. Venus is the last planet in this list that is smaller than Earth, but the size difference isn't that much as compared to Earth. That is why it took no time and destroyed the Earth completely. That's the fastest I have seen the life likelihood percentage drop and the core temperature rise. Is it just me? Or the more destruction Earth gets, the more beautiful scenarios it creates? There is only one way to find out, I guess. Coming up on number four of our list is Earth itself. Of course, it wouldn't be a complete experiment if we didn't make Earth suffer with another Earth as much as it makes us anguish every day. As we are trying to collide Earth with itself, its gravitational pull, of course, makes it try to orbit Earth at first, but both of them end up falling into one another. Why do the fragments from the collision look like cereal to me, or am I just hungry right now? Wow, you would think that colliding Earth with another Earth would create twice the life, but nature is just ruthless like that, I guess. See, I knew that the bigger the collisions are, the more beautiful scenarios they will create over time. How are the values stabilizing already? I don't even think that this time we can even reach the mark that we achieved with Venus before. As I suspected. We only reached 8.36 life likelihood with a collision this big, while even with Venus, which is smaller than Earth, we achieved 5.75 somehow. Maybe it has something to do with its composition, rather than its size. I am kind of relieved that size doesn't matter in one more situation. Now we are moving to the first planet that is bigger than the Earth itself, which is fifth on the list. Neptune. Neptune isn't just big as compared to Earth, but it has a radius of 24622 kilometers, while Earth has a radius of 6,371 kilometers only. And what makes it even more badass is that almost 80% of the planet is comprised of dense ice. So let's see how this impacts its collision with Earth. Oh wait, this time Earth is the one that is vanishing into the other planet. 
No way this is all I had to do to stop Earth from becoming habitable, and to stop all those Florida men from reproducing in the parks and bathroom stalls. I feel kind of sad for our not-so-much-of-a-home-place-anymore Earth, but it has a lot more suffering to go through before we spare it. At least it gave Neptune the nice hot weather that it deserved after such a long, chilly break. Let's move on to the next planets and see if Earth can survive any of them, as it just gets bigger from this point forward. The number six planet on our list is yet another ice giant with a composition like Neptune, with only a radius of 1,000 kilometers greater than Neptune. So we don't really expect much different results as compared to Neptune. But hey, we are great men at science over here. We leave no stone unturned, especially when it comes to terrorizing Earth. So off you go, Uranus. I don't know who named you, but whoever did it did you dirty. Oh my! Why did it go smashing into Earth like that? I mean, we know you were mad about your name, but what was that? And now it's just releasing red gases after eating up our Earth completely? Uranus really takes being mad to another level. I really want to watch and see that what happened right there? That was too quick for me to even understand. Uranus and Neptune ate up the Earth entirely, which leads to there not even being any Earth, let alone trying to check its vitals and life likelihood. But hey, let's hope the bigger ones spare us a bit. At least it left a beautiful trail of fragments behind, one of which most probably contains one of the Florida men trying to do the impossible and bring Earth back somehow. Now for the planet on number seven, we have Saturn, which is known for the rings around it. It is almost twice the size of Uranus, which was already way too big, but now our Earth has to endure this one as well. But this planet is mainly made out of hydrogen, which makes it less denser as compared to Uranus, which kind of gives us hope for Earth this time. Since Saturn is such a big body, it only made sense to launch Earth towards it instead of doing it the other way around. No way! Saturn ate up the entire Earth just like that? That's it, I am done with everyone tormenting Earth like this! You, sir, are getting your rings taken away by something much smaller than you. You guessed it right, a black hole. How does it feel to be on the other side of the table? Not so good, huh? Let that be a lesson for Jupiter, and I hope it doesn't do the same thing with our Earth. For the last planet of our solar system, we have Jupiter right here. You just have to feel bad for Earth at this point. I mean, it has been getting swallowed since forever now. Planets just eat it up and leave a bunch of gases behind as if they burped up something after a snack and now look at its size as compared to Jupiter. Nothing but sadness. So let's just put an end to our beloved planet's misery and put it up against one of the largest planets in our solar system for our Earth to become its one last snack. Oh Lord, look at that. Not even a quarter of the area of Jupiter is affected even after swallowing our Earth whole. I just know that when I changed Earth's name to Get Wrecked, I was only doing it justice for what was coming up next for it. Now that we have been swallowed by almost half the solar system, it's time for a bonus round for collision with the astronomical body that keeps our Earth in balance, the Moon. Oh, it feels good to be back on swallowing the planet's side for once. Let's go back to checking vitals and life likelihood because I just know that people out here are putting in great efforts to get those numbers back up. Wait, how did the Moon do more damage than the collision with planets bigger than it did? It would be really unfair if we collided the Earth with Moon and not with Sun. But considering how small the Earth is as compared to Sun, this seems unfair as well. I mean, just look at how teeny tiny it looks in front of it. I don't even have any hope for Earth this time. Yup, as expected. The Earth didn't even bother releasing any gases or anything like the other planets did. Now I feel bad for taking Saturn's rings. Can I have my Earth back, Mr. Sun, please? It wouldn't be a proper extra gaming video without celestial destruction happening, so for the grand finale, we have aligned every planet in our solar system to launch at Earth once we start the simulation. At this point, I just feel like I owe Earth an apology, but, welp, we can apologize later. Of course, right off the bat, they start eating up each other like it's nothing. But hey, look, Earth is trying to escape the destructive path. Never mind, I got a little bit of hope for Earth, but it all came crashing down. It just looks like the big boy Jupiter ate up the entire solar system. At least this time, it is engulfed in destruction itself. The last time, it didn't even notice if something hit it. But at least this time, we made a beautiful work of art, even if it was with massive destruction. 
All right, so basically we learned today that if something was to happen in our solar system today, our Earth would always be the one to get destroyed in half the situations. But with Florida men saving it, and in the other half, we just get straight up eaten by the big boys out there.